Imagine a hidden library, filled with secrets so ancient they seem almost eternal, pulsating with knowledge of alchemy, ceremonial magic, and mysteries that have shaped civilizations. Welcome to the narrative of a book that is a true odyssey through the occult and esoteric. The Secret Knowledge of All Ages by Manly P. Hall In this colossal book, published by the author himself in 1928, each of its nearly 50 chapters is so packed with knowledge that it could be a book on its own. Here, we delve deep into topics such as Kabbalah, alchemy, tarot, ceremonial magic, neoplatonic philosophy, mystery religions, and theories about Rosicrucians and Freemasonry. It's a one-way journey for those who wish to understand the depths of the esoteric teachings that have influenced modern Masonic symbolism. Hall's work was a challenge to digitize due to its tiny typography and extensive use of italics, requiring Herculean manual typing effort to bring this giant to the modern world. But don't expect to find all the answers here. The book has its peculiarities and controversial theories, such as outdated material about Islam, the Bacon Shakespeare hypothesis, and even a conspiracy of history directed by an elite of immortals. Despite these questionable aspects, the book is an invaluable source of comprehensive information on other esoteric subjects. And although the colorful illustrations from the paper edition, protected by copyright, are omitted from the digital edition, all the black and white illustrations have been preserved, some large enough to carry an impressive amount of detail. In this first step of our journey, we present the structure that will be our guide. From the discussion of ancient secret societies to the mysteries of alchemy, passing through the philosophy of Pythagoras and the symbolic icons of insects, animals, and gemstones. Hall's work is a map to the vast and often uncharted territory of secret knowledge, promising to illuminate the many paths through which the esoteric has influenced and laid the foundations for both ancient and modern thoughts and practices. Get ready, because we are only just beginning to loosen the seal of this treasure chest of deep and mysterious knowledge. The journey to the heart of the occult has already begun. In this segment of the book, The Secret Knowledge of All Ages, author Manley P. Hall begins a deep exploration of secret philosophical systems and mysterious societies that have shaped esoteric beliefs and practices throughout history. He boldly announces his intention to gather and present these ancient doctrines in a worthy and respectful manner, staying as loyal as possible to the spirit of their original creators. Hall describes the meticulous start of his work in 1926 and the collection of reference materials starting from 1921. He claims to have removed footnotes in favor of clarity and incorporated quotations and references into the main text. With the addition of an extensive bibliography, and a thematic index for navigation. Although he admits to having no doctrines of his own to propagate, he emphasizes his commitment to avoiding misinterpretations and promoting awareness of mystical teachings, despite them being considered absurd by modern thought. The process of translating the ancient texts consumed much research effort involving multiple languages and collaborators. Hall expresses gratitude to the libraries and individuals who helped him, highlighting that his work is the result of extensive collaboration. The preface concludes with Hall highlighting the unprecedented pre-publication demand for the book, made possible by the financing of the edition through pre-orders from subscribers. He thanks everyone who supported the project, even before its realization. After the preface, the table of contents is presented, listing upcoming chapters detailing topics such as secret societies and ancient mysteries, descriptions of ancient educational systems, the Eleusinian mysteries, the legend of Atlantis, the symbolism of the human body, and the legend of Hiram, among many others. This excerpt serves as a comprehensive introduction and prepares the reader for immersion in topics ranging from ancient mysteries and initiations to hermetic symbolism and occult traditions, promising an intellectual and spiritual journey through centuries of esoteric wisdom. We dive deeper into the symbolic tapestry that spans the ages, and in this panorama, we find Jonah and the whale emerging as parables of faith. The fish becomes an icon of Christ, and the Egyptian scarab beetle a symbol of rebirth. We move on to see how even insects carry celestial meanings, like the Jupiter fly in ancient myths. 
we observe how the mythological figure of the serpent weaves together wisdom and knowledge in cultures around the globe. The sacred crocodile in Egypt and the dove, emblem of peace and the divine feminine, continue our symbolic journey, crossing paths with the phoenix, a symbol of eternal regeneration. The great seal of the United States and the complexity of its symbolism come into play, along with Bastet, the Egyptian cat-like deity, and Apis, the sacred bull. Then we turn our attention to plants, like the flower that unfolds as a phallic symbol and the lotus that emerges as a symbol of purity and spirituality. The Scandinavian world tree, Yggdrasil, interweaves its branches and roots through the cosmos of Norse mythology, while acacia and grape become signs of immortality and mystical ecstasy. We continue our walk to understand how stones, metals, and gems have been revered since prehistoric times passing through mystical records such as the Tablets of the Law to talismans adorned with zodiacal stones. Ceremonial magic and witchcraft open doors to darker mysteries. We discuss souls sold to the devil, symbols like the pentagram, and notorious practitioners like Dr. Faust. Then, we dive into Paracelsian theory of elemental inhabitants, gnomes, undines, salamanders, and sylphs, and explore demonology and practices such as vampirism. We delve into the hermetic healing of pharmacology and chemistry, bringing forth Paracelsus and his transformational practices. The Jewish mystical doctrine of Kabbalah is then revealed, with a divine cosmos and the interpretation of prophetic dreams. The Sephirotic Tree of Life stands before us, explaining the structure of divine spheres, and with it, the fundamental cosmological principles of Kabbalah. We delve into human creation with the art of Gematria, the Kabbalistic journey, and its interpretations of Adam as the model for all humanity. The major arcana of the tarot and their esoteric implications are discussed, unraveling hidden symbols and meanings. The tabernacle in the desert is brought to light, as well as the life of Moses and the sacred attire of the priests of Israel. We enter the Brotherhood of the Rosicrucians, uncovering their history and alchemical teachings, and we discuss the ideals and philosophical constructions of Rosicrucianism. We present Kabbalistic and Rosicrucian diagrams that unveil cosmic secrets and divine creativity. Alchemy and its famous exponents, including Paracelsus and Nicholas Flamel, come to life in our exploration, as well as the practices and principles of the search for the Philosopher's Stone, reflected in the enigmatic emerald tablet of Hermes Trismegistus. The chemical wedding symbolizes spiritual alchemy and the pursuit of knowledge and transcendence. And by considering the link between Bacon, Shakespeare, and the Rosicrucians, we unravel one of the most debated literary and hermetic mysteries in history. We then proceed to decipher the role of cryptography in symbolic philosophy, contemplating secret languages and their hidden potentials. Masonic symbolism is analyzed with its columns and arches, offering a glimpse into the wisdom that underlies the fraternity. We go further to examine mystic Christianity, esoteric interpretations of the life of Christ and delve into the mystery of the crucifixion as a cosmic allegory. Our reception of the apocalypse and the interpretation of its prophetic visions connect us to a higher consciousness. Islam and its esotericism are considered through the life of Muhammad, the revelations of the Quran, and the mysteries of the Kaaba in Mecca. Native American symbolism is also addressed, revealing layers of knowledge and sacred rituals. And in this epic philosophical journey, we encounter emissaries of the mysteries who extend a chain of knowledge through the ages, from the age of reason to the new space frontier of thought. And we reflect on the definition of philosophy and its mission to establish a relationship between the visible and the invisible. This is a universe of knowledge that unveils how each culture has attempted to understand and express the reality behind the veil of the material world. It is a bubbling cauldron of symbols and systems that have shaped human thought over millennia. In this journey through ancient wisdom, we observe the thinking of Anaxagoras, who saw the infinite divine as the self-moving mind, establishing a connection between the atomic and the divine, where universal order was created from the original chaos by the divine mind. Contrasting this, Archelaus saw the world as a game of polarities between the mind and the air, while Heraclitus emphasized constant change with fire as the primordial and divine gift. We move on to the Italic school, 
with roots in the thinking of Pythagoras, which emerged as one of the first to establish a community of collective study, adopting mathematics as the basis for understanding the cosmos and insisting on philosophizing as a way of life. Its doctrine emphasized the interconnectedness of numbers and existence, establishing the idea of celestial harmony. Xenophanes stands out for questioning mythical narratives and conceiving a singular, immutable, and self-contained God, something that Parmenides and Melissus of the Eleatic school expanded upon, challenging the reliability of the senses and proposing a unique, unchanging being as the essence of the real. Leucippus and Democritus then present a cosmological view with the primordial void being filled with infinite atoms, manifesting physical reality, shaping the thought that would influence future scientific conceptions. Socrates, without imposing ideas but inspiring critical dialogue, claimed that the soul already possessed all knowledge before its union with the body, and that souls could recall this prior wisdom through reflection and philosophical discussion. Proposing a triad of principles, God, matter, and ideas, Socrates saw philosophy as the path to true happiness. Followers of Socrates expand on these propositions with Xenophon and other disciples, while Aristophanes ridicules them in his comedic portrayals, distilling his cultural critique. Welcome back, my book-loving friends. Today, in segment two of our journey through the secret knowledge of all ages, we're diving deep into the heart of ancient philosophy. From hedonism to stoicism, from Plato to Nietzsche, get ready to explore the different schools of thought that have shaped our understanding of the world and ourselves. But before we begin, let me remind you of the bigger picture here. Philosophy has always been humanity's way of understanding our relationship with the cosmos, the divine, and our own souls. Each thinker, each school, contributes a piece to the puzzle of existence. And by exploring these ideas, we not only connect with our past, but also sow the seeds for our intellectual and spiritual future. So let's keep that in mind as we embark on this philosophical adventure. In this segment, we start with Aristippus of Cyrene, a student of Socrates, who founded the Cyrenaic school. Their philosophy revolved around hedonism, the belief that pleasure is the ultimate goal in life. For them, the main source of knowledge was emotional reactions to the world, with pleasure being the greatest good of all. They emphasized living in the present, as only the present can bring pleasure, unlike the past and the future, which are filled with regret and uncertainty. Next, we move to Plato's Academy, where a sign at the entrance reads, Let no one ignorant of geometry enter here. Plato, influenced by his studies with the Egyptians and the Pythagoreans, had a threefold philosophy, ethics, physics, and dialectic. He believed that knowledge is recollection and defined God as the eternal essence. According to Plato, there are three orders of being, the unmoved mover, the self-moved, and the moved. After Plato's death, two groups emerged, the academics, who continued his teachings, and the peripatetics, who followed Aristotle at the Lyceum. Aristotle, with his incredible mind, explored almost every field of knowledge. He divided philosophy into practical and theoretical, viewing the soul as composed of nutritive, sensitive, and intellectual parts. Finally, he defined God as the first mover, immutable and eternal. Moving on, we encounter the skepticism of Pero of Elis and Timon, who questioned the possibility of absolute knowledge. They argued that truth is indeterminate, leading to a philosophy of continuous search and suspended judgment. Then we have the Stoics, led by Zeno, who proposed a materialistic philosophy that revered voluntary resignation to natural laws. This devotion was expressed through gentleness and resilience in the face of life's trials. Epicurus and his doctrine, somewhat similar to the Cyrenaics, emphasized a dignified state of pleasure achieved not through sensory experiences, but through control over mental and emotional fluctuations that cause suffering. And finally, we come to eclecticism. The art of selecting ideas from opposing philosophical schools to create a system that reflects the eclectic philosopher's personal beliefs. Here we witness the diversity of thoughts that shaped ancient wisdom, a rich tapestry of understanding the world and our place within it. So let's dive deeper into the depths of ancient philosophy and see how it has laid the foundation for modern thoughts. As we enter the first century, 
We encounter the Neopythagorean school taking shape in Alexandria, with notable figures like Apollonius of Tyana and Moderatus of Gades. This philosophical current bridged the gap between paganism and Neoplatonism, with roots in Pythagoras and Plato, while focusing on metaphysical speculation and ascetic practices. We also observe a deep fascination with the mysteries of numbers, influencing even the Essenes, a Jewish community of the time. However, Greek philosophy was no longer shining as brightly as before, giving way to the pursuit of physical pleasures and worldly phenomena, foreshadowing modern materialism. Next, we delve into Neoplatonism, which flourished with Plotinus and others like Porphyry and Proclus, seeking to preserve the secret teachings of ancient doctrines. In a world that was turning its back on spirituality, Neoplatonism emerged as a protest, reflecting on metaphysics and acknowledging the existence of vital esoteric teachings. Unexpectedly, there was an overlap between early Christianity and Neoplatonism, with the latter influencing the philosophy of the Church Fathers, known as patristics. This philosophy developed the idea of man as the supreme creation, which laid the foundations for Augustinianism, a kind of Platonism within Christianity. We also see the emergence of Gnosticism and Manichaeism, each interpreting Christianity through its unique metaphysical lenses, moving away from classical concepts towards human autonomy in relation to their spiritual destiny. As the years went by, Bothius marked the end of ancient Greek philosophy, giving way to a new frontier, scholasticism. This movement aimed to harmonize philosophy with theology and brought forth thinkers like Aquinas, who developed Thomism to reconcile reason and faith. Meanwhile, Duns Scotus elevated individual will to a new philosophical stature. And suddenly, Francis Bacon bursts onto the scene with his inductive methodology, paving the way for modern science. This scientific momentum was further strengthened by Thomas Hobbes, who took a materialistic view of the world, reinforcing the wave of rationalism and empiricism that was spreading. From humanism to idealism, from realism to behaviorism, philosophy continued to branch out and flourish. In the 19th century, we encounter Spinoza, who discarded the concept of a personal God in favor of a God synonymous with the universe. And there's Leibniz, with his theory of monadology, establishing the groundwork for a more complex understanding of substance and reality. Through these philosophers, we glimpse a constant evolution of thought, a quest for an increasingly profound understanding of human existence and our place in the cosmos. And now, my friends, we dive into the philosophical revolution that shook the world of thought. Immanuel Kant and his band of thinkers who reshaped how we view the mind, knowledge, and existence itself. Kant, a disciple of Leibniz and Wolff, dedicated himself to unraveling the depths of human understanding. And what did he unearth? A critical philosophy that encompassed the critique of pure reason, the critique of practical reason, and the critique of judgment. He showed us that the mind is not a prisoner of matter, but rather a conductor that selects and coordinates perceptions, placing them into categories that encompass everything from time and space to causality. But Kant didn't stop there. He turned his focus to morality, and, unable to comprehend the noumenon, that reality beyond our perception, he deduced the existence of three indispensable postulates, free will, immortality, and God. Journeying through art and biological evolution in what he called the critique of judgment, Kant united the phenomenon with the noumenon in a way that no one had done before. Then came Johann Gottlieb Fichte, inspired by Kant, who sought a union of pure reason and practice. He declared that everything we know is, in fact, a living content of our consciousness. Friedrich Wilhelm Joseph von Schelling, succeeding Fichte, proposed that the infinite and eternal mind is the cause of everything, and our intellectual intuition has the potential to transcend both subject and object to grasp the essence of things. According to von Schelling, the absolute is like a symphony with three movements, always seeking to incarnate itself in the finite and then return to the infinite. Georg Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel, feeling that Schelling's intellectual intuition fell short, chose to build his philosophy on pure and relentless logic. Hegel expanded logic into a realm where it reigns supreme until we realize that thought has no beginning or end. His theory mirrors a God that is eternally becoming, never fully reaching a state of completeness. 
and then we encounter contrasts like the realism of Johann Friedrich Herbart, who sees the universe as a mobile phenomenon passing through our minds. And there's Arthur Schopenhauer, who elevates will to the role of protagonist in existence, with intellect struggling against blind impulses. The stage of the gods also comes to light with Greek mythology and its divine hierarchies, which Proclus the Neoplatonist attempted to decipher, likening them to a mighty cosmic tree. Finally, Friedrich Wilhelm Nietzsche bursts onto the scene with the explosive proclamation that God is dead from pity. Nietzsche brings forth the idea of eternal return and places the will to power on a pedestal, shaking the foundations with his aspiration to cultivate the ubermensch, surpassing the conventional and the mediocre. This journey through the minds of German philosophy giants leaves us yearning for the vast schools of thought that are yet to come including Freudianism, Relativism, and even the French and English contributions, such as Cartesianism and the empiricism of Locke and Hume. And so, my fellow seekers of knowledge, this is but a rough outline of a mind map that safeguards the treasures of human reason, chiseled not in stone, but in the living pages of our philosophical history. Take a deep breath before we once again dive into this intellectual ocean that has so much more to reveal in the upcoming segments of The Secret Knowledge of All Ages. In the whirlwind of philosophies that have shaped our thinking, George Berkeley challenges Locke's views with audacious idealism, proposing that knowledge resides not in material objects, which he argues may not even exist, but in ideas. This current, which permeates and governs the universe with the mind, suggests that everything we perceive could be a mere invention of our minds. According to Berkeley, we should not doubt our capacity to perceive, for to doubt is to reduce humanity to beings incapable of knowing or understanding anything. As we jump like a stone across the lake of knowledge, we come across the associationism of Hartley and Hume, where the association of ideas supports the psychological realm. For them, a repeated sensation takes on a life of its own, able to be evoked by the mind even in the absence of the original object and thus we enter the territory of Bentham's utilitarianism and the mills, with their maxim of the greatest good for the greatest number. John Stuart Mill firmly believed that just as sensations reveal properties of things, intuition or reason can lead us to the true core of substances. Darwin's doctrine of natural selection and physical evolution then fiercely joins the dance, followed closely by agnosticism and neo-Hegelianism, the former proclaiming the incognoscibility of the ultimate nature of things, the latter representing a revival of Hegel's idealism. Herbert Spencer emerges with a vision of evolution as increasing complexity and balance, where God is the infinite intelligence manifesting itself throughout time. According to Spencer, all existence flows from a homogeneous state to a heterogeneous one and back again, in a cycle of growth, disintegration, and reintegration at higher levels of being. So there you have it, my friends, a glimpse into the vast array of philosophical schools that has shaped our world. From ancient Greece to modern times, each thinker, each idea, has contributed to our understanding of ourselves and our place in the cosmos. I hope you enjoyed this segment of The Secret Knowledge of All Ages. Make sure to like and subscribe to my channel for more in-depth book summaries. And remember, the pursuit of knowledge never ends. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep expanding your mind. Welcome back, fellow knowledge seekers. In today's segment, we will dive into the mysterious world of ancient wisdom and secret societies. Our journey takes us to explore the depths of philosophy, unravel the enigmatic symbolism, and unravel the profound teachings of the Druids and the ancient cults. This is the third segment of our adventure, so if you missed the earlier parts, make sure to catch up and join us on this thrilling exploration of the secret knowledge of all ages. We begin by delving into the realm of philosophy, where the Italian philosophers Bruno, Vico, and Croce shake the foundations of their time. Bruno challenges the status quo by placing the sun as just one star among many, while Vico emphasizes a divine force operating through natural laws reflected in our human institutions. And let's not forget about Croce, the Hegelian idealist who sees ideas as the only reality, replacing religion with ethics and aesthetics. Moving on to American philosophy, we encounter two influential schools of thought. 
Emerson's transcendentalism, rooted in the power of the metaphysical realm, and William James's pragmatism, where truth is a means to effective thinking and consequences serve as a guide to understanding the nature of things. But our exploration doesn't stop there. We pay homage to symbolism, the universal language that speaks to both the visible and the hidden. The profound mysteries of philosophy, once safeguarded by the ancient sages, were encrypted in symbols to be deciphered and perpetuated by only the wisest. This is the philosophical legacy that has transcended time, inspiring us to question and shape our understanding of the universe and ourselves. Now prepare yourselves to enter a realm where the visible meets the invisible, where secret knowledge, safeguarded by a select group of initiates since the dawn of humanity, awaits those bold enough to unravel its mysteries. This knowledge, potentially dangerous in the wrong hands, has always been hidden behind captivating symbols. And what better symbol to represent these ancient mysteries than the Orphic egg encircled by the serpent, symbolizing the cosmos enveloped by the creative spirit? The breaking of the egg signifies initiation, the awakening to a higher state of consciousness. We then explore the intertwining of secret societies, ancient mysteries, and the symbolism of modern Freemasonry. Intellectual men turn to these mysteries to gain deeper insights into life's problems, using their discernment to decipher their own fate. Meanwhile, those with simpler minds relied on the guidance of the enlightened. It becomes clear that knowledge was stratified. Esoteric teachings for the few advanced initiates and literal interpretations for the unqualified masses. In ancient times, the deeper truths of natural laws were masked behind the veil of myth. Deities representing procreative energies were revered by the general public, while initiates saw these figures as symbolic representations of abstract and profound truths. Temples were not only sites of popular worship, but also housed the schools of mysteries, where secret knowledge was passed only to initiates through rigorous rituals. One of these initiates was Plato, who faced criticism for revealing some of this secret knowledge in his writings. Moreover, we gain insight into how almost all ancient societies had their state religions alongside reserved knowledge exclusively for the philosophical elite. Many of these cults vanished without a trace of their secrets, but Freemasonry preserves some of their rituals and symbolism. It becomes evident that the schools of mysteries played a significant role in shaping human knowledge, urging their disciples to live with integrity and view a righteous life as the most acceptable sacrifice to God. However, with the moral decline of societies, these mystery schools degenerated, allowing degrading practices to infiltrate their ranks. Only a hollow shell of their original ideals remained. Yet, a few faithful individuals fought to preserve the true wisdom from extinction. Amidst this backdrop, we delve into the complex relationship between early Christians and pagan mysteries. The mysteries accused Christianity of not demanding virtue for salvation. The teaching goes, the elevation of humanity stems from understanding and following divine laws, and the mystery schools sought to reignite the dormant spiritual powers within the human soul. But let's not think that mystery schools were exclusive to civilization. There are signs of their knowledge even among the most primitive peoples, hinting at a potentially vast but hidden influence across different cultures around the globe. To intertwine ancient wisdom with the ground we stand on, we are led to the Druid mysteries, intertwined with the history of Britain and Gaul. These masters of knowledge, the Druids, balance the sacred and scientific roles, serving as priests, physicians, and possessors of deep understanding of nature and its elements. Sacred mistletoe was revered and collected with great ceremony. This passage reinforces the idea that knowledge has always been a flame guarded in secret temples, awaiting the next audacious mind to follow the stars to the hidden truths. Now let's immerse ourselves in the wisdom of the Druids, these ancient sages who drew from mysteries as captivating as those of Greece, Egypt, and even hints of the distant East, perhaps influenced by the lost city of Atlantis and its solar traditions. The structure of their secret wisdom divided initiates into three distinct levels. The Ovates, dressed in green, carried the burden of basic knowledge, essential in medicine, astronomy, and poetry. The bard layer, adorned in celestial blue, symbolizing harmony and truth, 
recited about 20,000 verses of sacred druidic poetry, meticulously memorized. Finally, at the apex of the hierarchy, the druids adorned themselves in white, the color of purity in the sun, dedicated to tending to the people's religious needs. The ascent to the highest position among them, the title of archdruid, was not just a matter of lineage but an election based on virtue and knowledge. Dazzling in their ceremony, the archdruid adorned themselves with the Eidhan Moran, a breastplate capable of suffocating anyone who lied beneath its weight. The tiara, reminiscent of the rays of the rising sun, and a magical brooch with a white stone that supposedly attracted divine fire from the heavens, were powerful symbols of their office. The druids, wise and frugal in their words about their mysteries, maintained a close relationship with nature, honoring nature spirits and Gallic deities, some surprisingly parallel to the Greek and Roman gods that Caesar discovered during his conquests. They were men of science and morals, often living as ascetics, abstaining from indulgence, and dedicating themselves to hidden and celestial knowledge. The initiation into the Druid mysteries was a journey of purification and trial. The neophyte underwent character and strength tests, often cloaked in the darkness of forests or caves, to learn about the creation of the universe, the gods, the laws of nature, hidden medicine, the movement of celestial bodies, and the foundations of magic and divination. Interestingly, the Druid initiation ceremonies aligned with solstices and equinoxes, with special emphasis on the birth of the sun god at dawn on December 25th. Sacred symbols such as the oak tree, the sun, the moon, and stars held great importance. Even the snake and the cross, an ancient representation of the supreme deity in the form of a T, carried profound spiritual significance. Connections with the philosopher Pythagoras, the presence of a Druidic Madonna holding a child, and reverence for the saving power of all beings after purification and learning through various lifetimes showcase the complexity and depth of Druidic spirituality and philosophy. Passing through celebrations of festivals and days sanctified by the lunar and solar cycles, we reach the final revelation of this excerpt. The three degrees of Druidic mysteries and the severe trials faced by the initiates, such as being buried in a coffin or being cast adrift at sea in an open boat. Surviving these rituals meant being reborn, and the chosen few were then taught the most hidden secrets captured in ages past by the Druids. This is the mysterious world of ancient times, intertwined with secrets and rituals that echo humanity's eternal quest for understanding and connection with the divine. These elements resonate even in modern spiritual practices. Now prepare yourselves for the powerful mystical narratives and sacred practices that weave the intricate tapestry of ancient faith. In England, the imposing remnants of stone altars known as Stonehenge still echo the nocturnal mysticism of the Druids. How those stone giants were transported continues to baffle modern minds. But it is in these quiet marks of the past that we find cosmic reverence and the dark powers of the night. In this context, we delve into the ancient beliefs that inhabited the lands of Persia. Two eternal principles emerge, shaping the destiny of the cosmos and humanity. Ahura Mazda the spirit of good, creator of hierarchies of angels and archangels, and Araman, his primordial antagonist. Araman, initially beautiful and pure, chooses the path of rebellion and jealousy, becoming the embodiment of evil after the creation of light by Ormuzd. His influence permeates matter and intertwines with the eternal duality of the human soul, sparking a cosmic battle that spans ages. At the heart of this cosmic struggle stands Mithras, the god of intelligence appearing as a mediator. The rituals dedicated to him unfold in underground caves, reflecting the depth of the earth and the secret battles between light and darkness. These mystical practices with strict degrees of initiation involving the symbolism of the crown, armor, and cloak, all topped with celestial signatures, share common ground with traditions that would later flourish in Western culture, including Freemasonry. Interestingly, despite being suppressed and gradually forgotten by the early Christian church's might, echoes of Mithraic faith can be found in shared elements with Christianity. From birth rituals to resurrection symbolism and the final judgment, Mithras and Christ walk parallel paths despite their distinct origins. And if all these cosmic connections were not enough, 
the venerable practice of immersing oneself in the mysteries of Mithras, excluded women, while men marked with the Egyptian cross were honored as lions after enduring trials that purified them. In these sacred dramas, enacted in silent and secret chambers, the imagery of the celestial bull sacrificed by Mithras crystallizes as a promise of rebirth and fertility for the world. And so the cycles turn, the believers ascend, and in the esoteric universe where everything intertwines, the mystical experience of these ancient cults finds its reflection in the development of secret societies. Mithras, emerging from the stone, is the perfect image of the dawn that breaks the boundaries of the horizon, an eternal solar symbol that defies the ages. That's all for this segment, my fellow truth seekers. Stay tuned for the next part of our exciting journey through the secret knowledge of all ages. Remember, knowledge is power, and the secrets of the past continue to shape our present and future. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another mind-blowing segment of our journey through the secret knowledge of all ages. We're diving into the depths of ancient wisdom, uncovering mysterious figures and enigmatic rituals that have shaped our understanding of the world. So, are you ready for another dose of enlightenment? Let's get started. In this segment, we delve into the complex world of Simon Magus, a deep thinker immersed in the mysteries of Gnosticism. Simon's pioneering vision of this mysterious philosophy shines through as he unravels the universe, spiritual beings, and the creation of material reality. According to Simon, the cosmos is a duality born from an invisible and inconceivable source called Bythos. This eternal wellspring unfolds into two primordial principles, the universal mind, which orders everything, and the great thought, which generates all beings. Together, they give rise to the intermediate air, where the Father resides, sustaining and nurturing all creation. Simon's vision encapsulates the idea that materialization occurs through the interaction of positive and negative principles. As we dive deeper into Gnostic knowledge, we encounter two main currents, the Syrian cult with a dualistic nature and the Alexandrian cult which tends towards pantheism. The Alexandrian cult in particular blends Egyptian hermetic teachings, Eastern occultism, Chaldean astrology, and Persian philosophy under the influence of the Egyptian thinker Basilides. His goal was to unify the early days of Christianity with pagan mysteries, introducing the concept of the divine Abraxas. Abraxas, depicted as a hybrid creature with a human body, serpent legs, and a rooster head, symbolized the forces of the universe in 365 aeons, or spiritual cycles. This points to a sacred numerology linking Abraxas to divine power and the days of the year. Within the Gnostic community, there were also controversies surrounding the Demiurge. Some saw him as a source of suffering, while others viewed him as a divine executor. The Christian interpretation of Christ among the Gnostics was unique. They believed Christ was a personification of Nu, descending into the body of Jesus and leaving him before the crucifixion, thus unable to experience death. Valentinus later led the Gnostic movement, adding layers to the already dense philosophy and emphasizing the Virgin Sophia. After the 3rd century, the path of the Gnostics declined, and their doctrines resurfaced in some form within medieval times, blending into other spiritual currents. Their influence remains hidden and integrated into the dogmas of contemporary organizations. Moving forward, we uncover the enigma of Serapis, a deity of Egyptian initiatory rites, whose true essence was revealed only to the priestly elite. Serapis is associated with celestial bodies, the movement of waters, earth, and air, symbolizing the soul of the world, amalgamating the material body of nature represented by Apis and the soul, Serapis. This passage unravels the intricate tapestry of Gnostic concepts, enriching our understanding of the ancient connections between religion, philosophy, and the perennial search for esoteric knowledge. Every figure and idea described here is not just a forgotten point of view in history, but a link that connects us to our eternal quest to understand the cosmos and our place in it. Now let's journey further into the depths of ancient wisdom that spans continents and eras. We encounter gods and mysterious rituals that shape the fabric of existence. One figure that stands out is Serapis, a bridge between cultures uniting ancient India with the splendor of Egypt. C.W. King suggests that Serapis may have roots in the Hindu pantheon, connecting him to the god of death Yama. 
Some even speculate about a mythical journey from India to Egypt on the back of a sacred bull. The name Serapis reflects different dimensions, from the sacred bull to the soul of Osiris, emphasizing its connection to the zodiac, particularly Taurus, and the cycles of renewal linked to the flooding of the Nile. As we explore the dark and mystical realm of the Odinists, Sig assumes the identity of Odin, establishes a priesthood of initiates, and spreads the secret rituals of the death and resurrection of Baldr, symbolizing both mourning and sacred renewal. Each character and rite we encounter weaves together the intricate tapestry of occult knowledge, bridging matter and spirit in a narrative that transcends time and space. Initiates are challenged to journey beyond the visible into the beating heart of mystery. Now, we plunge into the depths of ancient knowledge with the powerful and enigmatic traditions of Odin's mysteries. These mysteries were guarded by the Twelve Draughters, representing the zodiac signs and preserving the ancient arts and sciences. While these practices faced extinction with the rise of Christianity and internal corruption, they shaped the core of Odin's mysteries. At the center of Odin's mysteries lies the narrative of the Supreme Creator, All-Father, and his representative, Odin, who, with the help of the gods Vili and Ve, shaped the universe from the giant Emir. The palaces of Asgard and the realm of Valhalla are essential components of this cosmogony, where the gods eternally battle and revel. Baldr, the Scandinavian Christ, emerges as the compassionate and beloved soul among the gods. His death at the hands of the fateful Hothar, influenced by the mischievous Loki, embodies suffering and the search for spiritual renewal, offering a clear parallel to the Christian myth. This paved the way for mystical practices where initiates symbolically relived Baldur's ascent, overcoming trials and gaining transcendental wisdom. Initiates had to navigate through nine underground chambers, each symbolizing one of the nine worlds in Norse conception, from Asgard, the celestial realm, to Helheim, the abyss of the dead. They sought hidden truths and wielded the sacred ring as a symbol of rebirth and initiation. These ritual practices wielded a significant influence on culture, as seen in Richard Wagner's epic saga, The Ring of the Nibelung. While it deviates from the original story, it maintains the majestic spirit of Norse mythology. In parallel, the text hints at connections between the nine Norse spheres and the nine steps taken by initiates in the Eleusinian mysteries. It highlights that mystical figures and nature's most cherished secrets were widely shared, albeit under different names and forms throughout eras and civilizations. The wisdom contained within these mysteries endures, shaping spirituality and philosophy to this day, urging human beings to transcend materialistic illusions and awaken to their true spiritual essence. Ah, delving into the mysteries of ancient Eleusis feels like unlocking the deepest secrets of our souls. Our ancestors saw a thin line between life and death, believing that our living spirits were often veiled by our basic animalistic tendencies. In Eleusis, they taught about transmigration and reincarnation. The belief that souls slip into material existence at the magical hour of midnight when the invisible worlds are closest to us. The Eleusinian ceremonies held immense symbolic richness. Imagine the story of Persephone's abduction by Pluto, lord of the underworld. It symbolized the divine nature tainted by the animal soul, dragged into the shadows of Hades, a representation of our material plane. These rituals span nine days, each with its own significance. On the first day, there was a gathering and a qualification process for initiates, then a procession to the sea, sacrifices, competitions, ritual dramas with philosophical symbolism, all part of an intricate initiatory theater leading to the exhibition of sacred urns and jars, crucial symbols of Bacchus. Now, here's an intriguing aspect. The darker side of these mysteries unveils itself not just through mystical aspects, but also through a warning about suicide, hinting at a profound mystery that traps those who take their own lives in tragedy. What's fascinating is that the name Mists, given to initiates of the lesser mysteries, meant seeing through a veil. They had a blurred vision, a glimpse of what lay ahead. Only those who passed through these simpler initiations could aspire to the greater mysteries, dedicated to Ceres and the search for Persephone, using intuition and reason as guiding torches. This dual aspect reflected the legend of Persephone, who was forced to divide her time between Hades and the upper world. 
The greater teachings involve secret practices, possibly similar to Brahmanic mysteries, encoded with the enigmatic expression, Konk's Om Pax. Thus, the soul, symbolized by Persephone, learned to navigate between the world of the living and the world of the dead, bringing light to the understanding and liberation of the spirit trapped within mundane personalities. Wow! That was another mind-expanding segment, unearthing the hidden truths and mystical wisdom of these ancient mysteries. We've traveled through the realms of Gnosticism, encountered the enigmatic figure of Serapis, and ventured into the profound Odinist traditions. These narratives connect us to the eternal quest for knowledge and understanding, transcending time and space. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you won't miss the next thrilling segment of the secret knowledge of all ages. Remember, knowledge is power, and together we'll uncover the deepest secrets of our existence. Stay curious. Hey there, welcome back to my channel, where I bring you the most exciting book summaries in the most engaging way possible. And today, we're diving into the fifth segment of the book, O Conocimiento Secreto de Todas as Eras, by an incredible author. In this segment, we get transported to the sacred world of ancient initiation mysteries, starting off with the Eleusinian mysteries. Picture this, a symbolic journey through two gates, one leading to the underworld, representing birth into ignorance, and another leading upwards, to an illuminated space where the magnificent statue of Ceres resides symbolizing the higher realm of light and truth. Talk about a mind-blowing journey. These mysteries were so powerful that even the famous Roman orator Cicero praised their impact on human life. But wait, there's more. We also explore the Orphic mysteries, with the legendary figure Orpheus taking center stage. He was not just a mere mortal, oh no, he transformed into a divine being. Orpheus, the founder of Greek theology, spread moral teachings and had divine musical skills. His tragic love story with Eurydice illustrates the soul's quest for wisdom and the risks of doubt and distrust. By the end of this segment, you'll see just how rich in symbolism and allegory these ancient myths can be. Moving right along to the Dionysian and Bacchic mysteries, get ready to immerse yourself in the story of the young god, Bacchus, and his battle against the Titans. This myth symbolizes the eternal conflict between the rational and irrational aspects of the soul. And of course, it wouldn't be a proper ancient tale without a man-made demigod, Jupiter, the Demiurge, showcasing the cycle of life, death, and rebirth. These mysteries teach us an important lesson about the divine nature of mankind and the significance of preserving the rational principles of the soul. But hold on, there's so much more to uncover. We also uncover the secrets of the Dionysian architects, a secret society that skillfully combined earthly construction with celestial science. They may have even played a role in building the famous Temple of Solomon. And speaking of secrets, we can't forget about Atlantis and the ancient gods. Is it just a mythical tale, or could there be some truth to the existence of this once great civilization? Plato's writings and recent scientific discoveries have ignited a renewed fascination with Atlantis, and we dive deep into the possible connection between ancient gods and the Zodiac. And just when you thought it couldn't get more intriguing, we explore the mysteries surrounding the god Tammuz and the goddess Ishtar. This ancient fable, dating back to 4000 BC, beautifully reflects the spiritual journey of humanity through the veil of seven sacred planets. Then we're taken on a journey into the heart of ancient traditions, encountering figures like Adonis and Pan, who symbolize the eternal dance between life and death, light and darkness, and the cycles of nature. With each story and myth we unravel, we discover a magical tapestry of ancient civilizations, filled with hidden knowledge and profound truths about the nature of reality and the human journey. These sacred mysteries were not just tales for entertainment. They held deep wisdom and lessons for those who sought to understand the divine within themselves. So join me on this epic adventure through ancient wisdom as we uncover the secrets of O Conocimiento Secreto de Todas as Eras. And that's a wrap for this segment. If you want to catch the full video and dive deeper into the mysteries of this incredible book, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring. Hey there, bookworms. Welcome back to my channel, 
where I bring you the juiciest summaries of the most mind-bending books out there. Today we're diving into segment 6 of 8 of The Secret Knowledge of All Ages. This part takes us on a journey through ancient mysteries and the deep wisdom of Thoth Hermes Trismegistus. Are you ready to expand your mind? Let's do it. So our adventure starts in the enigmatic sanctuaries of Samothrace, where the Kabiric mysteries celebrated mysterious deities, often understood as planets, natural elements, or cosmic forces. These rituals, brimming with symbolism and enigmas, also tell the story of a god who is unjustly killed, only to rise again, promising salvation to the world. In this tapestry of stories, we encounter the figure of the Hanged Man, exemplified in mythologies like Odin, who suspended his own life between dimensions to transcend to profound knowledge. Just like Odin, the one who is suspended represents the human spirit connected to the divine in search of wisdom beyond worldly illusions. These parables of death and resurrection, sacrifice and enlightenment, lay the foundation for the mysteries that stretch all the way to the figure of Jesus Christ. He too embodies the archetype of the dying and resurrected God, ultimately symbolizing the enigma of human redemption. So, our journey through this part of the secret knowledge of all ages is a pilgrimage through the symbols and rituals that make up the grand opera of the human spirit. It offers us a sacred and timeless glimpse into the deepest mysteries of existence. Through the eyes of ancient civilizations, we see a reflection of our own spiritual path, a path paved by gods who die and are reborn, just like the hopes and revelations of our own being. Now it's time to take a deep dive into the ancient wisdom with the life and teachings of Thoth Hermes Trismegistus, a fascinating chapter that takes us to the heart of Egyptian mysticism. In this scene we find ourselves in a temple where the initiator, adorned in resplendent garments, presents the neophyte with the light of Egypt, a secret luminosity known only to the masters. This light, filling the space with shimmering particles, symbolizes the hidden knowledge of mystical traditions. The majestic appearance of Hermes, enveloped in a radiant green glow and carrying a winged staff entwined by serpents, is the climax of the ceremony. He is hailed as the thrice great, the supreme sage of multiple arts and sciences. Up close, the neophyte not only witnesses a physical form, but a being of divine intelligence and wisdom. Among Hermes' many feats, it is said that he wrote an unimaginable number of books, sharing knowledge that spans from medicine and alchemy to astrology and philosophy. It's clear that Hermes transcends the figure of a single individual, becoming an entity that personifies the accumulation of human knowledge throughout the ages. Hermes's writings, known as Hermetism, have had a lasting impact on the development of Western science and esoteric philosophy. It is said that he introduced humanity to the 365-day solar calendar, contributing to the organization of society and time as we know it. Though the remnants of the Hermetic texts are incomplete due to historical destruction, they still stand as testaments to ancient knowledge. Many believe they hold the keys to the mysteries of the universe. One of the most enigmatic works associated with Hermes is the Book of Thoth, said to contain the secrets of the universe and the rituals for achieving immortality. Though this knowledge may be lost in the sands of time, it continues to inspire those seeking ancient wisdom. As we delve into the exalted figure of Hermes, we witness the fusion of the divine and the earthly. He serves as a bridge between mortals and immortals, an archetype of the universal master. His teachings still echo as a call to awaken human consciousness. Within the ancient Hermetic mysteries there existed a unique key, held only by the Master of Mysteries, the highest initiate of the Hermetic Arcanum. This secret holder knew what was written in the Book of Thoth, a document of invaluable wisdom lost with the decline of the mysteries. It is believed to have been preserved and taken to another land by faithful initiates. The book still exists, guiding disciples of this era to the presence of the immortals. The apostolic succession, beginning with the first hierophant, initiated by Hermes himself, remains intact. This suggests that those prepared to serve the immortals may discover this document if they seek it sincerely and tirelessly. The Book of Thoth is said to be none other than the mysterious Gypsy Tarot, a symbolic book consisting of 78 pages possessed by the gypsies since their expulsion from their ancient temple, the Serapium, 
where they were Egyptian priests. Secret schools exist today that have the privilege of initiating candidates into the mysteries, igniting their flames from Hermes' burning torch. Hermes reveals the one path to immortality, a path followed by sages of all nations and beliefs. The divine text, Poimandris, the vision of Hermes, is one of the oldest surviving Hermetic scriptures. Though not in its original form, dating back to the early centuries of the Christian era, and having been translated imprecisely, it contains countless concepts from the Hermetic cult. Poimandras describes how divine wisdom was revealed to Hermes, initiating his ministry and teaching the secrets of the invisible universe as they unfolded before him. The vision is an exposition of Hermetic cosmogony and the secret Egyptian sciences related to the culture and development of the human soul. In a state of meditation and prayer, Hermes freed his higher consciousness from the bodily senses, witnessing a terrifying figure, the great dragon symbolizing universal life. The great dragon identified itself as Poimandras, the mind of the universe, asking Hermes to keep its image in mind and instructing him about the nature of the universe and the gods. Hermes's vision is filled with images of light enveloped in darkness, a sacred word emerging from the waters, and the creation of a glorious human being by supreme understanding. The manuscript reveals the mysteries of existence, how reason emerges from thought, and how life is the product of the union of the word and the mind, a secret that holds the key to immortality. Poimandras exposes Hermes to visions where the cosmos is ordered by celestial powers led by the flame of divine work. These powers form seven governors, representing the forces that govern the world, which Hermes aspires to understand. As he contemplates these forces, Hermes realizes the duality within, the divine nature within, and the mortal and mutable form without. The union of these two natures results in human suffering, the price of the descent of divine consciousness into a material form. This segment reveals the foundations of hermetic teachings on esoteric knowledge and the quest for truth and immortality. It emphasizes that those who genuinely seek higher understanding can find eternal wisdom that transcends the visible and tangible. They embrace the hidden truths that reside at the core of human existence. At the heart of one of the most enigmatic texts of ancient wisdom, we find the central figure of the immortal man. This being is androgynous, simultaneously masculine and feminine, ever watchful and unacquainted with sleep. Governed by a divine entity that is also androgynous and ever watchful, this being represents a mystery that remains hidden to this day. And from this mysterious union between nature and man of the heavens, an astonishing creation was born. Seven men, all androgynous as well, personifying the qualities of the seven governors, cosmic and divine representations. These men arise from the earth, the feminine element, and water, the masculine, receiving the spirits of fire and ether. The composed man is endowed with soul by life and with mind by the received light from the great dragon, intertwined with both immortality and mortality. For a time these beings reproduced on their own, as they contain both the masculine and feminine within them. However, at the end of this cycle, destiny unraveled their ties and the order of creation was altered. Then God spoke and promulgated the multiplication and growth of beings. He taught that although death is a product of attachment to the body, knowledge of one's own immortality is within reach for those who understand their true natures. Hermes, one of the central figures in this teaching, is represented as the universal principle of life. He is recognized across different cultures by various names such as Odin, Wotan, or Buddha. His death is open to interpretation. Some say he was transported to God's presence without experiencing death, while others believe he was buried, leaving behind a treasure, not of gold, but of knowledge and sacred writings. The expression, Hermes's shepherd dog, originated from the comparison of humanity to a flock of sheep, with Hermes acting as the guide under the order of a supreme shepherd. This representation persists in Egyptian rituals and religious symbolism through the shepherd's staff. Later, God, through providence and in harmony with the seven governors, separated the sexes and ordained union and the generation of new lives, unraveling each creature from its initial hermaphroditism. The ignorant man who loves only his body remains in darkness and suffers the pains of death, while the wise and just 
seek eternity through understanding of divine life and light. Poimandres, the great dragon, reveals to Hermes that only the pure and philosophical can comprehend the mysteries of the mind and are saved by the word of God, while those who surrender to low senses and emotions remain in agony and perpetuate their own torments. Upon death, the material components of man return to the elements, and the divine man ascends to the eighth sphere from which he originated. The malevolent go to the refuge of demons, and the lower passions and impulses return to the seven governors. Thus, the spiritual man has the opportunity to return to his original purity, freeing himself from illusions and ascending to the eighth sphere, a place of truth and praise. Those who fail to ascend the seven-step ladder remain in darkness, carried in the cycles of eternity, awaiting a new beginning, while those saved by the light of truth unite with the divine light, becoming mighty within God. And with this profound wisdom, Hermes becomes a guide for those lost in darkness. He spreads the seeds of wisdom and guides humanity to ascend from the shadows of ignorance to the light of divine knowledge. At the end of his earthly life, Hermes instructs his disciples to preserve his teachings and, in his final act, reaffirms his commitment to divine truth and service to the great light, offering a prayer of gratitude and recognition to the Father of all things. Hermes concludes his vision with a call to awakening, reflection, and transcendence. He reminds us that the divine resides within each one of us and that through understanding and practicing truth we can achieve immortality. And that's it, my friends. What an incredible journey through the ancient mysteries and profound teachings of Thoth Hermes Trismegistus. I hope you enjoyed this segment as much as I did. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and ring the notification bell so you never miss one of my mind-blowing summaries. Until next time, keep exploring the depths of knowledge. Imagine yourselves standing before a colossal structure, its foundations immersed in mysteries as deep as its roots in the earth. We are in the chapter about the initiation of the pyramid, of the book The Secret Knowledge of All Eras, and here unfolds the fascinating analysis of this wonder of the ancient world, the Great Pyramid of Giza. The pyramid rises not only as an architectural marvel, but as a silent enigma about a forgotten civilization. Its dimensions and mathematical alignments defy understanding and raise questions about the origin and true purpose of this colossal construction. According to the ancient historian Herodotus, the pyramid was built in steps and elevated by simple wooden machines in a gigantic operation that lasted ten years, consuming large quantities of food and supposedly money. However, this narrative is questioned in the text as a possible charade intended to conceal the true meaning of the Great Pyramid. The idea that it would be a burial site for Pharaoh Khufu is refuted for several reasons, including the absence of typical Egyptian funerary decoration and the uncertainty about who really built this supreme edifice. Some inscriptions that could provide clues about its builders are mere mason's marks and there is a debate about whether the construction preceded the Great Flood or not. An Arab story suggests that the pyramid was built to protect against the Flood, or as a treasure of an antediluvian king. Caliph al-Mamun, in the ninth century, even excavated the pyramid searching for hidden treasures, but without success. Over time, the pyramid's casing stones were removed and reused. There are many problems and theories about the pyramid, such as whether its construction dates back to a time before the emergence of hieroglyphs or even Egyptian religions, or whether the pyramid is truly the product of deep initiatory wisdom. There are indications that its design may be aligned with sophisticated astronomical knowledge and mathematical calculations that reflect celestial events tens of thousands of years ago. The questions are many and the mysteries intricate. Regarding the details of the construction, it is understood that the pyramid was built with precisely calibrated stones, using a high-quality mortar and even diamonds as cutting tools for the limestone stones. And curiously, the structure aligns itself in such a way with geometric and astronomical points that it nearly squares the circle, an achievement that blends sacred geometry and mysticism. At this point, we face the challenge of understanding how the initiations took place within the pyramid's chambers. Considering that access could only be made through secret underground passages that remain unknown today, 
as the original entrance was sealed by casing stones. Thus, the Great Pyramid of Giza remains one of humanity's greatest enigmas, a fascinating combination of engineering, architecture, and esoteric symbolism, challenging our current understanding and inviting us to reflect on the true legacy of ancient civilizations, their knowledge, and beliefs. In the heart of the Egyptian sands, the Great Pyramid holds mysteries that still puzzle experts in ancient history and architecture. A particular enigma, the granite rocks blocking the ascending corridor to the Queen's Chamber. Caliph al-Mamun, in his attempt to explore the pyramid, had to destroy these rocks to proceed. But how could these stones have been placed there? Scholar C. Piazzi Smythe proposed that the stones were placed from top to bottom, which would imply that the workers responsible for this feat had left the upper chambers. Here, architect Dupre comes in with a different theory. According to him, the well that Smith believed to be a passage used by both workers and thieves was actually an entrance made by the looters themselves. Dupre argued that the roughness of the well and the chamber known as the grotto contrast with the architectural precision of the rest of the pyramid suggesting that they were not part of the original plan, but rather an improvised and violent access. Dupre's analysis led to the conclusion that the well could not have been excavated from top to bottom, but rather from bottom to top. The purpose of the grotto? To provide air for the thieves while they worked. It is difficult to imagine that the master builders of the pyramid would destroy one of their own ramp blocks and leave a broken surface visible. The possibility of the well-being the work of thieves sheds light on the mystery of the empty pyramid found by Al-Mamun. It also raises questions about the disappearance of the coffin lid, possibly removed by looters. There is also the intriguing niche in the north wall of the Queen's Chamber. While local guides mention it superficially as a sanctuary, its shape indicates that it might have been part of a planned corridor. Dupre suggests that if the well didn't exist, Perhaps it was through this passage that the workers exited after placing the granite stones in the passage. And how can we not mention the curious biblical interpretations that see the Great Pyramid in unique ways? Some scholars suggest that it could be Joseph's granary, even though its capacity is incompatible with that function, or even the resting place prepared for the Pharaoh of the Exodus, although his body has never been found. Some even see it as an eternal confirmation of biblical prophecies. In summary, the Great Pyramid is still an open book of mysteries, with theories attempting to explain the construction methods and the intentions behind its enigmatic structures. Each corridor, niche, and chamber continue to offer more questions than answers about the civilization that erected it and the cultures that explored it. So let us dive into the sands of time and reveal the majesty of the Sphinx this highly Egyptian statuary that guards mysteries as imposing as its gaze lost on the horizon. What does it symbolize? Does it reveal a gateway to ancient knowledge, or is it simply a sentinel of the vast desert? The Sphinx, with its lion body and pharaoh's head, is the very image of the sun god Harmakis. This work was sculpted with the likeness of the ruler who commissioned it and later restored by pharaoh Thutmose IV, who moved by a vision freed it from the sands that almost overwhelmed it. Curiously, the detail of the broken beard found between its front paws suggests a veneration that goes beyond symbolism. It is believed that the heart of the Sphinx is composed of a single colossal stone, while its front paws are enigmas built with smaller blocks. This guardian with wide-eyed gaze stretches for an impressive 200 feet in length, towering 70 feet in height and 38 feet in width a true wonder that defies not only gravity, but also our understanding. Ancients speculated that the Sphinx, a figure carved with remnants of visible painting artifacts on its damaged face, could be a symbolic entrance to the Great Pyramid. However, despite fascinating theories suggesting passages between the creature and the pyramid, the physical reality of this monument tells us that no tanned secret or hidden corridor has been revealed to this day. Speaking of secret galleries, some scholars argue that underground chambers exist beneath the Great Pyramid, a theory supported by evidence of vast spaces beneath the Sphinx, which turns it into a potential gateway to unknown depths. However, 
The builders of the Great Pyramid were wise enough not to place such a colossal weight on anything less than a solid foundation. What does this tell us? That such chambers, if they exist, must be smaller than popular imagination may assume. Thus the dual enigma of the Sphinx emerges, a symbol of strength and intelligence, a fusion of positive and negative creative energies, as Gerald Massey unveils. It sits almost diminutive when compared to its monumental backdrop, the Great Pyramid, perhaps a reminder of the eternal and inescapable cycle of life, death, and rebirth. Finally, let us behold the Great Pyramid, whose chambers and corridors remain as mysterious as the very existence of the civilization that built it. Chambers above the King's Chamber, with hieroglyphs, air passages ventilating the massive structure, and a configuration of labyrinthine passages propose more questions than answers. And while some see it as a monument to distant deities or a magnificent mausoleum, others believe it to be a complex stone book containing the knowledge of distant eras. Thus, the true magic of the Sphinx and the Great Pyramid may not only lie in their physical structures, but also in the symbols and meanings encoded in their immortal designs. For now, until new discoveries can enlighten us, they remain solemn guardians of the secrets of time and the history of humanity. In the mystical heart of ancient Egypt, the Great Pyramid of Giza stands as a beacon of hidden wisdom. The ultimate symbol of the microcosm and the macrocosm it was, in initiatory understanding, the first temple of the mysteries, the repository of sacred knowledge that formed the foundation of all arts and sciences. But what does this imposing mass of stone mean to the ancients, and what could it mean for us today? The pyramidal structure mirrors not only the physical configuration of the powerful zodiac constellation, but also the ascendant path of spiritual initiation. In its secret chambers, sacred wisdom resounds. Candidates for initiation enter as men and emerge transfigured, reborn as enlightened beings. The history of the pyramid is the history of man in search of divine enlightenment. Each side of the pyramid, adorned by one of Ezekiel's creatures, symbolizes the flow of divine energies descending into the material world, spreading wisdom and inspiration. The inner chambers represent spiritual centers within us, the heart, the brain, and the generative system keys to spiritual ascent. The absence of the pyramid's capstone reflects the teaching that only the divine is complete. And this apex, if it were to exist, would be like a series of descending pyramids supporting each other to infinity. Thus, man is seen as a raw block taken from the quarry of the world, being shaped by the secret culture of the mysteries until becoming a finely crafted and perfect cornerstone. In the depths of the pyramid, there was an enigmatic figure, the initiator, the guardian of the deepest knowledge, visible only to those who had passed through the rigorous stages of purification. It is said that even Plato encountered this master and contemplated the face of eternal wisdom. Welcome back, my friends. Today, we're diving into the final segment of the book, O Conhecimento Secreto de Todas as Eras. Can you feel the anticipation in the air? I sure can. So let's not waste any more time and jump right into it. In this last segment, we encounter the Great Pyramid, standing tall and proud, though now devoid of its spiritual energy from the past. It serves as a visible symbol of the alliance between eternal wisdom and the world. But, did you know that this seemingly silent and motionless monument was once a door between worlds? That's right. It was an archway through which only a chosen few could pass to seek personal fulfillment. Next, we meet Isis, the Virgin of the World. She symbolizes the lament of ancient wisdom, the mother of all things, and the deity of natural intelligence. The worship of Isis, with her countless names and forms, reflects the human longing for knowledge and understanding. It's this very longing that gave birth to the sciences, philosophy, and logic. Isn't it fascinating? The symbolism captured in the mystery and splendor of Isis echoes the eternal human quest for the sacred. It's a reminder that we have always sought something greater than ourselves, something that connects us to the divine. Now, my curious audience, let's take a moment to reflect on the central themes of this book. We've seen the importance of ancient wisdom, the power of symbols, and the everlasting pursuit of knowledge. These concepts are deeply rooted in human history and continue to shape our understanding of the world. As our journey through O Conhecimento Secreto de Todas as Eras comes to an end, 
Let's remember the valuable lessons it has taught us. We must never forget the importance of learning from the past, seeking wisdom, and embracing our innate curiosity. And with that, my friends, we've reached the conclusion of our adventure. I hope you've enjoyed this book journey just as much as I have. Remember to stay curious, keep exploring, and never stop seeking knowledge. Until next time, my fellow bookworms, stay tuned for more exciting summaries coming your way.